今朝、3時差です。A very good evening and a warm welcome to our respected professors and my fellow friends. I, Ms. Ishmeet Anand, a student volunteer of Lara Lajpat Rai College, would like to welcome you all on an online session of designing a research project proposal. So, today's project is organized by the PG Department of Lara Lajpat Rai College in collaboration with the HSNC University. HR College of Commerce and Economics. So, as we all know, a research project is nothing but an expanded research with an essay where one presents their evaluations, interpretations on the subject and illustrate them in an appropriate format or pattern. A research project benefits us with our commercial thinking, critical thinking, and communicational skills, and it also improves our research techniques. So therefore, projecting a research project is a skill. So we would be learning more about it in today's session. So without any further delay, I would like to call it upon um, Dr. Anila Marura, ma'am, our principal of Lala Laj Pitsrai College, to give her opening marks. Yeah, hello. Uh, hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, hello, Pooja, and thank you, HR College, for collaborating with us once again, especially on a very uh, important topic on how to design a research proposal. And who better than Kuldeep Sharma to give this guidance? An eminent guide from Hinduja College, so helpful to all his students. I have seen him in action. So I'm sure all the research students are going to have a lot of uh, guidance to take them in the right direction to form their research proposal. Thank you, Kuldeep, for joining us and willing to thank guide our students. And Pooja, thank you for collaborating with us. We look forward to more such collaboration with HSNC University with my old friend Pooja Ramchandani. So very great, Rahul, great work. And I'm sure that more such programs will follow. All the best and thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you to you also. I am Jaspeet Sodi from HR College. Uh, today, ma'am may not be able to join, so I thought uh, I will be there. Okay, so, thank you. Will you please uh, convey my regards to Pooja? Yes, yes, madam. Yes, sure, sure. Thanks to thank you, you too. You are always been supportive to us in all the many uh, ventures that we take forward. So thank you, madam. Thanks a lot. We can continue the session. Thank you, ma'am, for your wise words. So without any further delay, I would like to call upon um, our MCOM coordinator of Lala Lajpatrai College, uh, Dr. Rahul Shetty, sir, to introduce our resource person for today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ishmeet. And thank you, madam, for those motivating remarks. Without any further ado, uh, I would uh, take this opportunity to welcome Dr. Shul uh, Kuldeep Sarma, sir. It is indeed my honor and a privilege to introduce our resource person for today's session, that is Dr. Kuldeep Sharma, sir. Apart from his academic credentials and uh, credentials that is there with him, sir has been an avid researcher throughout his career and strongly believes in the maxim of quality stands over quantity in the research avenues pursued by him as an ideal researcher. With an enriching teaching experience, in the discipline of commerce, sir has presented over 91 research papers and published 63 of his research endeavors in national and international journals of high repute. Sir has been instrumental in guiding and completion of research dissertation and theses of 14 MPhil students and four PhD students from University of Mumbai in the capacity of PhD and MPhil guide University of Mumbai and has been a recipient of Best Research Paper Award for nearly 12 times in a row. Dr. Sharma has not only chaired various committees and forums at university level, but is also a recipient of Shorab Shivare Memorial Young Researcher Award by Maharashtra State Teachers Association at Aurangabad. We are extremely fortunate, sir, to have you amidst us and help us ignite young minds with quality research. 
Thank you once again for gracing the occasion. And I request Kuldeep sir to kindly take over now. Thank you, Rahul sir, uh, for introducing me. Uh, very good evening to all of you. At the outset, let me thank Principal Ma'am Nila Marora, Vice Principal Ma'am Jasbir Sodi from HR College, other organizers of this seminar, the management of Lala College as well as HR College for organizing this session today. All my dear participants, today we will going to discuss about what are the important guidelines which we are supposed to follow while making our research project. Today, we will going to discuss in detail what are the important elements which you require in a project so that your project can be called as a research project. So now I'm sharing my PPT and we will going to take advantage of some of the points of university circular also. Just a moment. I hope you can able to see my screen. Yes, yes, sir. yes. Yes. So today uh, we will going to discuss about some of the guidelines for making a research project. Now, what are the primary things which or what are the important features in the research project? Number one, it is a combination of both primary and secondary data. I'm not saying that your research should include primary and secondary both. It is purely depending on your nature of the topic what kind of a topic on which you are working. Suppose if you are working on some of the topic which is related or which are morely depending on the secondary, then you have to take a secondary data only. So it is nothing like that. On a particularly secondary data, project cannot be done. It can be done. But it is ideal if you use a combination of both primary and the secondary data. It should be an original work. When I say the original work means whatever is the contribution in the research project from your side, that is to be a genuine and the original one. It should not be copied or inspired from some other projects. Related to elective subjects, in MCOM, you have elective subjects and you have to take or you have to select any topic from your elective subjects. And the topic of the research project should not be something which is not there in your current syllabus, syllabus of any of the subject. Information oriented, different from thesis and dissertation, definitely your research project is different from thesis and dissertation. We will going to discuss what are the difference while discussing the points, what are the basic difference. But if you see from my point of angle, I say there is not a much difference between research project, minor research project, major research project, thesis and dissertation. Moreover, their format, their mechanism, their procedure are almost same. The only difference is that the area of the nature of problem which you are countering. When you talk about project, research project of PG level, you are only discussing a narrow topic, very narrow topic. Whereas in thesis and dissertation, the same topic you have to make a little bit broader and then you can make the topic. But their mechanism, their procedure formats are almost the same. Let's see what are the various stages in writing a, a research projects. First, you have to identify a broad area of a research. When I say broad area of research, I'm just giving an example. Suppose uh, there is a subject called taxation in your part two MCOM as one of the elective subject. So in that, there are various topics like implementation of GST, 
or if you are not comfortable with that topic you can take some other topic the various heads of income tax and what are the differences if the income is taken into consideration with different heads suppose if some student says no sir i am not comfortable with taxation but i want to make my research project in financial accounting or a corporate accounting in that you can talk about amalgamation of companies with reference to to take any two company okay or merger of two company you can also talk about merger of two banks you can also evaluate the performance of telecommunication industry with reference to a jio so similarly the topic can be taken but that topic main variable should be a topic of your elective subjects so here how many title or how many topic we have discussed a broad area we have discussed in that the main variables was number 1 amalgamation merger performance or a gst they all are the one of the topic of your elective subjects that is what i am saying your main variable should be a part of your electives conduct a detailed review of literature related to that remember one thing student don't take review of literature seriously but i say review of literature is a foundation of any study without a review of literature you cannot you cannot able to find out your research gap i think someone uh, mic is on i request uh, to please put yourself on mute okay thank you so i'm saying review of literature is very important i think sir has been muted ajiva uh so he would have yeah yes yes Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I think uh, that was a by mistake. Uh, she did. Uh, okay. Yes, I'm talking about review of literature. Why I'm saying review of literature is important because without a review of literature, you cannot identify your gap. Review of literature will tell you when, how the similar topic was taken into into consideration for research, and from that particular topic, what are the things. which you can able to relate with your study and what the thing which is not covered in that particular research that will going to become your research gap i'm just giving a small example suppose there are 10 study which was conducted on the buying behavior of female in different cities and they proved that women do a lots of shopping unnecessary but i am have a confusion whether when they are making such kind of a statement have they considered their socio economic background also i mean to say any consumer who are not financially sound also do a same kind of a, or also have a same kind of a buying behavior so that will going to become a my research gap and i want to conduct a research on the same topic to study the consumer behavior amongst female with respect to their socio economic status now the similar kind of a study is conducting in my area conducted by me okay but taking into consideration a special factor that was socio economic and i realize yes they those who have done the study they are correct but up to a certain extent the reality is that those who are not financially sound they are not doing unnecessarily shopping even they are thinking a lot before doing a shopping so this the same study has contributed or your study has contributed some different dimension in the earlier study and that is the main purpose of research research is something which 
a topic which you are searching again and again with different dimension and you also prove that this is a dimension which was missed out earlier and i am searching and this is what i found and i want to add this thing to the research so this is how we keep on adding fundamentals we keep on adding concepts into a new concepts and definitely one day a one final concept came into a picture so this is a main objective of the research contributing something or adding something to the old concept and making that concept as a modified concept <coughs> similarly my third is identification of a gap from the gap i can able to frame my objective or i can set my objective try to understand suppose i want to know that or my research question or my research gap is what is the buying behavior among the female if their financial condition is not good okay so my first objective will be to find out the financial background of female okay under study number 1 number 2 will be to study their buying behavior pattern okay and number 3 to evaluate or to find out the factor influencing buying behavior so these are the three important objectives and this objective is derived from my research gap so research gap will give me a objective my research question will give me a objective to achieve or to you know uh, answer my research question i have to set my objective so objective is nothing but it is a point which i am going to answer to my research question and for supporting a my objective i have to frame a hypothesis hypothesis is nothing but it is a statement which is derived from review of literature and that will going to support my study there are many you know uh, myth in the you know market that uh, hypothesis can be any statement no it cannot be any statement it is a statement which is duly verified by the relevant review of literature without a proper review we cannot make any statement i cannot make a statement that tomorrow i will fly in air no is there is any history is there is any literature which says which says that human being you know can fly in air do we have such kind of a study or do we have any study which is done by someone else in the previous if not then that statement can be challenged so my hypothesis is a outcome of my review of literature and i and that particular statement i'm giving to support my objective and that is why we always says hypothesis and objective should go in hand to hand okay let's see let's set some hypothesis on our current uh, example my first was to find out a profile of female under studies or consumer under studies my second was to find out their buying behavior pattern okay so my object my first hypothesis might be there is no significant difference okay in buying behavior of females as per the demographic factor so i'm saying demographic factors do not play a significant role in buying behavior okay so now when i talk about uh, demographic factor in demographic factor income is also one of the factor and this particular factor will going to solve my purpose of the entire study therefore my hypothesis is closely connected with my objectives and remember the hypothesis is always be in the support of objective your statement should support your objective otherwise your objective is one thing and you are giving a contradictory statement in your hypothesis and ultimately if you prove your 
contradictory statement that meant what what was your hypothesis was not correct getting or not therefore i'm saying there is a direct relation between objective and hypothesis once your hypothesis and objective is set the next step is to design your research research design is nothing but it is a blueprint of your entire research work it is a outline it is a guideline how you will going to use your entire study how you will want to collect your data from which source you will want to collect the data whether it is a primary source or whether it is a secondary source if primary source then what should be the instrument of data collection either a questionnaire and what type of questionnaire whether it is a structured questionnaire or unstructured questionnaire whether it is judgmental questionnaire or a standardized questionnaire okay suppose i i'm saying i'm going to collect a primary data but not with the help of questionnaire i want to collect with the help of interview then again how the interview would be it is a structured interview it is a focus interview it is in depth interview what kind of a method you are following that is covered under a research design if you are going for second data then what are the source from where you have taken the data <coughs> apart from that it is also important to describe what is your universe what should be your target population what should be the size of your sample okay and for you know deriving a sample what technique you will going to use i mean to say whether you going to use probability technique or a non probability technique so these are the some of the questions which you have to answer in the research design point and after that how you going to test your data or how you going to analyze your data how you going to interpret your data and how you going to test your hypothesis this is also a important part of a research methodology or a research design and at the end writing a project is not difficult once you have done all this above point homework properly let's see all this thing one by one review of literature now we people are very blessed people because we are into a world of technology where we can able to find out anything on our fingertip i'm just wondering you know uh, i'm not talking about uh, very old but uh, almost 17 18 years back when people used to do their phd for those people even for writing us you know small research paper they have to do a lots of desk work when i say desk work means they have to go to the library they have to sit for hours for writing the important point which they have to include in their research paper a review at that time was not a easy task when i did my mphil in 2006 7 in fact at that time also internet was not so easily available we have to move to the cyber cafe and we have to pay around 60 rupees for an hour and in that also we are you no know, cannot able to take print outs we have to take a print out then we have to pay separately for that sometime 10 rupees 20 rupees per page and the saving again was an issue because at that time floppy drive was into a you know uh, into a market pen drive was available but it was not so cheaply available it was quite costly so people you know used to avoid such kind of a thing but suppose if you carry a pen drive you have saved all the data now from where you want to refer again for reading those saved data you again have to go to the go to the internet but nowadays this is not very old i am talking about only 16 17 years old story but nowadays you people are so lucky you can able to search each and everything on the internet some important literature some important thesis dissertation which is submitted not in india but abroad also okay what you have to do you just only have to put etd let's see the second point type your rough topic and add the word etd etd means electronic 
thesis and dissertation this is a database world database where you can able to find out all the electronic format thesis and dissertation submitted to any university of the world okay suppose if you don't want to read any thesis or dissertation i want to read any research paper just put pdf at the end and you will only get those you know kind of paper or those paper which is related to that particular topic only so search engine is a powerful tool only thing is that you should know how to use it apart from that there are many research related journals also which is available online you can take advantage of it some you know journals are also there scopus list journal or web on science journal scopus list journal like emerald elsewhere teller and francis we have a sag okay we we uh, also have you know uh, many other journals <coughs> where we can go and we can download some free editions can if you want to download any current editions then you have to pay a huge amount so it is always advisable that you can download free editions but those editions are almost you know 7 8 years back uh, years back edition but that doesn't going to make any difference to us because ultimately we want to see the review how the people have conducted a similar kind of a research and what are the important parameter they have taken into consideration while doing their research so definitely those previous paper will also help you out to find out what are the important elements which you have to choose or what are the you know thing which you have to leave in your topic so that your topic can be finished within a stipulated period of time then we also have a concept like ebooks your college library might also have a ebooks because uh, i know the library of both the colleges they have some you know uh, digital format of ebooks available in their library so you can uh, take optimum utilization of that apart from that some ebooks are freely available on internet i'm just giving example of nd field who is excellent you know uh, book in the field of uh, research methodology freely available okay if you buy it it will cost you around 7 8000 rupees but it is freely available only thing is that you will get one two three edition back it isn't going to make any difference then we have inflabinet inflabinet is a uh, you know uh, initiated by ugc where you know uh, the libraries of all the universities all the colleges are connected with one platform and that platform is inflabinet so here using this platform you can use a uh, ebooks or a digital uh, research paper which is there in the library of you know any any colleges which is connected to inflabinet suppose uh, i am a student of hinduja and uh, i want to search a you know uh, library of uh, hr college through inflabinet i can i can do so only thing is that hr college should also be connected to inflabinet so this is a very you know uh, important uh, you know platform which is created by ugc and the last one is shodh ganga shodh ganga is again a uh, uh, i should say uh, uh, all the database of uh, the journals or a thesis or dissertation which is submitted to any universities which is there in india so indian universities thesis and dissertations are available on shodh ganga again it is a ugc site and as per the new circular by ugc all the university have to compulsory register or upload their thesis and dissertation with shodh ganga otherwise their degree will not be valid <coughs> for you know mcom student you can do one thing you know uh, sometime uh, students say sir it is very difficult for us to go for review of literature we are not understanding even after reading entire research paper we don't know what to report and what to leave okay and you know sometime what happened when you read entire paper you get confused what are the variables i am not getting what 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 exactly this author has done uh, i am not getting anything so for that purpose you do one thing you review in a excel sheet yes i think anybody want to ask any question someone has uh, raised their hand 
Sir, I think we can take the questions towards the end. Uh, I request uh, audience to kindly restrain from raising hands at present. We can take the questions towards the end. Over to you, sir. So I can I can tell you one thing. You know, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, write down on a piece of paper so that you should not forget what uh, the important point which clicked uh, in your mind while I'm explaining that particular point. So that really will help you out. Okay. As I'm saying, you know, many students have a problem how and you know what are the important element we should read and what we should report in review of literature. After reading an entire book, after reading a research paper or a thesis, they don't you know, find what are the important variables, what or how we have to write the review of literature. So for that purpose, it is advisable that you should make an Excel sheet. And from this Excel sheet, you can able to do a review properly. And from the last column, you can able to know the research gap also. Let's have an example. Now here in Excel sheet, my first column is serial number, second is paper title, third one is name of the journal. Okay, I have written here name of the journal elsewhere or also we have Indian, you know, uh, so many journals like, you know, uh, uh, Vikalpa. Vikalpa is a journal of uh, IM Ahmedabad. Then uh, we have a journal like Ajanta, Ideal. Okay, then we have a Indian Commerce Association journal. Then we have a Journal of uh, Indian Accounting Association. Okay, then we have a, you know, uh, International Journal for Transport Management. This all are the name of the journal. Then the fourth column, we have to write down the publication. Why the publication is important? Like uh, if I have written the name here elsewhere, elsewhere have, you know, two, three countries where they do their publications. Okay, so from which country uh, this publication was there? Okay. Uh, which month uh, the edition was published, which was the edition, okay, in which year it was published. So everything is to be written in the publication detail. Author name. Now, last three columns are very important for me. Objective of the study. Now, the objective of the study will tell you why the author has undertaken this study. This study means the study which you have reviewed, okay. In the second last column, you can write findings and then you can relate findings with objective. What the objective is set in the beginning and whether he achieved his objective through findings or not. If there is no relation between findings and the objective, then you can write down in the remark. Okay. If it is matching, still you can write down in the remark what are the important element which is left out. And what are the important area which the author is left out and which you have included in your remark column will going to become your research gap when you are conducting a research. So this is how you can easily able to find out the relationship between your review of literature and a research gap. I hope you are understanding if you can able to understand the difference between objective of the studies and the findings of the study. This what you want to achieve and whether you have achieved or not. Okay. If you achieved, whether you achieved properly or not, or what you have decided exactly got the same answer or there is some variation. Okay. Or there is some division. So exactly what was the differences that will be a research gap for a further study but research gap cannot be identified only with the help of one studies you have to make a bunch of the study that is why we always conduct a review on the basis of the variable like review of literature on e-commerce review of literature related to market online marketing so online marketing is important variable and anything or any study related to online marketing, we are studying and we try to find out what are the important findings or what are the important suggestions given by the researcher while conducting their research. Next, we have <coughs> how to write a review of literature. Again, uh, this is not a difficult job. Everybody knows it. 
there are two different styles for writing a review of literature. Uh, you can write through APA style or MLA style, but uh, you know, in University you know, of Mumbai, we prefer APA style, that is American psychological style of writing. Whereas uh, some universities also uh, like, you know, modern language association writing style, that is MLA style. But this is the only two style in academic writing, whereas uh, Chicago manuals uh, style is used for writing in a magazines. That is also type of writing style, but that is used in a magazines. And recently, recently I'm going to say uh, seven, eight years back, there is one more, you know, writing style, which is uh, more into a market and lots of into discussion. That is Harvard style of writing review of literature. So these are some of the, you know, method of writing review of literature. Don't write K. Shankaran in his book, title so and so, written about so and so thing. No, no, this is not the way. You have to write down K. Shankaran. And if there is another guy, G. V. Joshi, 2016, <coughs> stated the reason for poor progress of the scheme of autonomy in college. So, what they have studied and what they have given the suggestion in an indirect form. Okay, let's see the second review. Here also I have written very clearly Dev Rahul, comma, Koli Namarta 2014 studied that the students from autonomous student are more satisfied than non-autonomous institute. The institute had a greater sense of responsibility. So this is what, this is the exact findings or a conclusion of the study which is conducted by Rahul and Narmata. Now where they have conducted you know, what was the title that will going to reflect in your references. Okay. Not while writing a review of literature. So, uh, let's see, this is how you have to give a citation in your references. Shankaran K. Joshi, 2016, emerging dot, this is APA Stella, dot emerging trend and student psychology in higher education dot journal of comparative psychology comma. Now, Name of the journal is in italic form. Huh? Page number 122. Okay. Sorry, uh, this is edition 122. Page number 141 to 144. And I have taken this journal online. So the date of issue. Okay. Or I should say date uh, at which on which I have taken this from the internet. So this is a link, proper link. So if you click on that particular link, you will land to that particular page on that day. Okay. So this is the thing which you have to write down in your references. Objective of the study. Once you have done your review of literature, once you have identified a research gap, now your fourth step is setting objective for the study. Now, when you talk about objective, objective should be a very clear statement. You should write very clearly what exactly you want to do. Okay. Then in research project, there should not be more than four objectives. This is not a written anywhere that it should not be four, but I am saying it should not be four because if you, you can take 10 also, but do you have that much time to justify your each and every objective? So you have a time of only six months that I am saying take maximum four. If you can take three, well and good, but four is an ideal number. Avoid complex statement. Complex statement are those statement, uh, you know, uh, which do not give a clear cut, you know, uh, uh, message what exactly you want to do. I want to find out this thing because of that and that thing. This is not the way of setting up objective. Objective is very clearly to identify or to find out, okay, or to evaluate what evaluate, what identify, what find out, you have to write very clearly. Always write down in a bold point. Let's see mostly objective, what the objective do, objective studies, the relationship between the variables, the differences between the variables. Let them an example. I can say to study the relationship between A and B or to find out the relationship between sales and advertisement. Differences. 
for differences you can set to identify the differences between a and b okay or to highlight the differences between bst buses and private buses perception perception is something which is related to the opinion to find out the perception of lala college student towards online teaching learning method okay to evaluate the perception of generation y towards online teaching learning platforms performance to evaluate to study to find out okay the performance of two different bank <coughs> or performance of the student to find out the trend new trends in market to find out the new trends in a particular segment in the any industry any stock market to find out the growth of public passenger transport or to find out the growth of new education policies and recent trend in new education policies what are the reasons okay for adopting self financing courses rather than traditional courses what are the factor influencing new generation to go for smart mobile so there are so many thing but objective should be very clear so in the objective these are the some of the important you know factor which or some of the important attributes which you are studying and apart from that you can study some other points also but this is the important factors which is or which will be reflected in most of the students so when i identified this few you know important thing which you can study in your objective i have done a review of so many thesis hypothesis setting a uh, setting of a hypothesis is also a very very important and technical thing for setting a hypothesis you have to see the two thing what objective we have and second thing whatever hypothesis you are setting or framing that has to be a checked by your review of literature or i should say it should be verified by your relevant review of literature otherwise your objective is something for which you are supporting some statement and that statement is completely completely you know which is not tested by history or it is a imaginary kind of a hypothesis to support your objective so at that time you cannot able to test your hypothesis let an example suppose today i am setting hypothesis that there will be a rain in the first week of december in mumbai and i want to check my this hypothesis this hypothesis is called as working hypothesis okay now remember one thing i have read a history or i have checked the record of last 100 years but i never found any incident of rainfall particularly in the month of december particularly in mumbai region so if i am setting such kind of hypothesis without proving it without waiting till december i can prove it in advance before doing a test that there will not be any rain my hypothesis is rejected so do such uh, set such kind of hypothesis which do not have any head and tail okay if you are setting such kind of a hypothesis you might land yourself in committing type 1 or type 2 error as your mcom student you have learned in your semester 2 okay what is a type 1 and type 2 error in research methodology subject type 1 error are those error where you reject the correct one accept the sorry, wrong one and type 2 is very when you except uh, reject the right one so a type 1 type 2 error should not be committed while testing a hypothesis 
and therefore these two important point are very important and whenever we ask student how many types of hypothesis are there students say it's uh, only two type null and alternative but remember one thing world uh, null and alternative are the same i don't consider this two hypotheses are different from each other because without a null alternative cannot be set suppose if you are setting a null hypothesis by default alternative will be there suppose i don't have any null hypothesis i want to work on an alternative hypothesis then it cannot be called as alternative then what it should be called it should be called either a working hypothesis or a directional hypothesis so basically there are there are hypothesis as null alternative as a one type okay and working or a directional hypothesis another type of hypothesis let uh, see the objective let let make uh, you know a uh, relationship between objective and hypothesis suppose my objective is to find out the relationship between a and b so my hypothesis will be there is no significant relationship between a and b now here i am finding out whether there is a relation or not <coughs> so here i found out ha huh, a is hr student b is also hr student okay a doing mcom in 21 22 b is also doing mcom in 21 22 both are accounting student okay so i found out the relation but do they have a significant relation significant relation is what whether they are a good friend or not they know each other or not there are so many similarity and on the basis of similarity i can say no they might be a friend but i am saying they may or may not be friend they might be studying in the same classroom they might be attending a same lecture they might be opt for a same courses they might you know uh, sitting on the same row but they may not be a good friend the possibilities are there so i want to check despite of so many similarity whether they are friend or not therefore <coughs> my objective was to find out the relationship between a and b so i have check out many similarity and on the basis of that i made a correlation between them okay now i want to see whether this relation is significant or not significance level in social sciences we are working at 95% interval level okay confidence interval level that means my p value should be less than 0.05 to reject my null hypothesis so my alternative are, there is a significant relation so alternative and null hypothesis are complementary to each other we cannot separate them let have another example to study the difference between a and b there is no significant difference between a and b i am saying there is no significant difference mai manke chalta dono mein koi difference nahi both are the same okay my hypothesis testing will tell me whether there is a significant difference or not okay impactful difference or not otherwise if you check the behavior of a two student you will say are they are almost same but when we tell it is a significant same when they behaving like 95% same okay anything less than 95% we reject the significance level okay now let's see what are the important thing which you have to write down in your research methodology chapter or what you have to cover under research methodology source of data collection primary source or a secondary source okay if it is a primary source how you have collected if you have collected questionnaire then write down about questionnaire i have written in the bracket optional 
because all the prime data are not necessary that you will going to collect through questionnaire only. Sometimes you also use observation method. Sometimes you use interview method. Okay. And in that particular interview, you may not, you may or may not have a structured questionnaire or focus questionnaire. Sometimes you do collect a data from experiment. So there are by simulation, there are so many things. Okay. So you have to write down from which source you have collected the data, then sampling method, which method you have used, whether it is a probability sampling or non-probability sampling. Probability sampling are those sampling which work on certain formulas, some techniques, some certain mechanism. Whereas non-probability are basically work as per your convenient. Okay. Then the sample size. Uh, selection of sample size, it, uh, you know, lots of uh, people do a lot of discussion, but I say, don't, you know, ask anybody what should be the size of my study. Go and refer research methodology books. Almost in all the books, the formulas are given for deriving a sample size. And remember one thing, whenever you take a sample size, always consider your population infinite. Huh. When to con consider the population infinite, when you have an exact detail of all the person which is there in your universe. Otherwise, you always take a infinite population and use a formula for infinite population. There are so many books, even Everybody have read about C.R. Kothari. Then we have a book of uh, Damodar Gujarati, who's excellent in necrometries. Then we have Naresh Malhotra, the best uh, research methodology bookseller in the world. Then we have S.L. Gupta. Then we have uh, Dr. Ajay Chauhan's book. They are an excellent writer. You, you can also read some foreign author's book like Andy Field. Okay. Like uh, Lenin, they have also written a very good book on research methodology. Only thing is that foreign author language is little bit, you know, uh, uh, I should say uh, confusing for us because, you know, uh, they use so uh, such kind of a word which is not commonly accepted by us in English. Huh. Those who are very good at English, uh, they understand, you know, uh, the various world bank or they understand a synonymous word, they can refer this for another books. Otherwise, Indian author have also did a excellent or they have also written an excellent book on research methodology. From that, you can use the uh, formulas and you can derive a sample size. Otherwise, there is a very world famous paper written by Glenn D. Israel submitted to University of Florida, the name of the paper is determinant of sample size, have proved that if your sample or your universe is infinite and you are, you are using non-probability sampling, the sample size should be 400. Sample size should be 400, but your sample should be a true representative of your universe. Let an example. Okay, suppose today I want to cook a rice. So what I have to do? I have to take one utensil. I have to put a rice in that and put on the gas. After a certain period of a time, okay, I go and I take one piece of a rice. I smash it and I decide whether my rice is cooked properly or not. Okay. And when we make a inferences on the basis of one rice, that rice is cooked properly. Kabhi bhi aisa nahi hota ki koi bhi ek dana uska kacha jai. So all the piece of rice are cooked properly. Will it possible that one rice is cooked properly, but the rest of the rice is not cooked properly? No, this is not possible. Because this all my 
सैंपल आर होमोजीनियस देर फोर वेन आई टेक अ सैंपल इट इज लाइक अ पीस ऑफ अराइस सो वेन यू टेक ट्रू रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ योर यूनिवर्स इवन फोर हंड्रेड पीपल विल टेल यू द इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट thousands of people and that is why in exit poll or opinion poll nowadays these agencies are getting almost correct answers almost correct predictions because when they take a exit poll they don't ask all the voters but they ask a genuine voters who giving their genuine opinion and on the basis of 16000 17000 responses <coughs> this news channels <coughs> prediction doing a prediction for 12 crore 13 crore people on behalf of 12 and 13 crore people just with a data of 16 and 17000 and remember one thing from last 8 to 9 years their predictions are coming almost correct their success rate is 96 97% and that is shows the power of research this shows a power of sampling technique and finally test of your data in research we have two type of test parametric and non parametric under parametry we have read three type of test t test f test and z test but remember one thing these three tests are are the same test this three test varies on the basis of the size of a data that's all but there are many other part of a t test like we have a independent t test two independent t test we have a pair t test we have a repeat measure anova we have a anova we have a two way anova we have n way anova they all are the part of a t family or i should say parametric test under non parametric test we have read about chi square but the family of chi square is also big here we have man whitney u test we have a candle two test we have crucial wallis ks test then we have a macnamer test we have fredman test cross step apart from that we <coughs> also have wilcoxon test under the family of chi square so there are so many tests and which test to be applied that is purely depending on the your research methodology which type of data you have collected when i am saying the type of data whether you are collecting a nominal data ordinal data or a scale data it is purely depending on that otherwise implementation of a test any test is not a advisable now data analysis and interpretation under data analysis and interpretation there are two process there are two method here or i should say there are two fold one is data analyzing and after that we have a interpretation of the data so for data analyzing we have to go for data processing such as editing coding classification and tabulation and then after we go for data analysis <coughs> data analysis is nothing but <coughs> find out the percentage ratios okay and we are presenting in the form of digital in the form of table and graphic in the form of chart and diagrams then on the basis of that we are drawing inf inferences inferences means we are interpreting the data what the data says okay what the relation data shows among themselves how much percentage of this out of this so this is all interpretation and in the same chapter we also include testing of hypothesis and testing of hypothesis are very important because testing of hypothesis will show you 
the significance of the impact, the significance of the relationship, the significance of the difference, or perception of whatever it be. <coughs> These are the format of research project. First of all, my first chapter should be introduction. Second should be review of literature. Third should be research methodology. And research methodology should include all these things, statement of the problem, objective of the study, hypothesis, research methodology in detail, and so on. I have just given three points. There are so many points. Here also I have given three points, but there are still so many points. Scope will come. Okay, then history of your topic will also come. So many other things will come. Chapter four will be data analysis and interpretation. Chapter five, finding, conclusion, and suggestion. And at the end, we have to write down bibliography. Bibliography do not carry any number. So that is, bibliography is not a chapter. Therefore, we are not giving any number to it. But this is a important part in a project. So let's see some of the guidelines given by the university for the project making. This is for M Mumbai MCOM. I hope you can see. Yes, yes. I guess I can see. Let's see. Now here, a research project, Mumbai University says, you have a two option. Either you make a research project or either you can make a project on the basis of internship. Okay. <clears throat> so now, uh, you know, after this, we will also put some light on an internship. But why, you know, I am not giving so much, you know, focus on internship because in, in internship writing, you don't have a concept of, you know, research methodology. We don't have a concept of, you know, uh, parametric test, non-parametric test, setting of hypothesis, such kind of a things are not there. That is why that thing can be explained with five, six minute explanation also. So this is a guideline. Now they are saying uh, you can make a two types of a project. There are two methods they are provided. Project uh, on the basis of research methodology, okay, and the project. Is there a connectivity error? Uh, yeah, sorry, not audible. Okay. Uh, yes, I think sorry, not audible. Yes. I think you may rejoin back. No problem. And students are requested not to move the meeting, uh, move out of the meeting room, please. If there are any technical glitches, you can go out and come back immediately, but please don't leave the meeting room. Uh, sir, if you could please call him up and check, sir. Yes, yes, I'm doing that. Ah, your back is. Am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. Now, yes. I don't know what happened. I think. Uh... I went out or I thrown out? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, no, sir. It was mute. Uh, mute ho gaya tha, sir. Sorry. Uh, my screen is visible or I have to share once again? Sir, yes, you need to share back. I 
I think now it is uh, visible. Yes, yes, we can, we can see. We can see. Okay. So here uh, we are talking about the guideline. Guideline is almost uh, you know covered in our explanation. These are uh, the format of print your project font should be times new roman font size should be 12 and if you are taking title it should be in the 14 font the line spacing is 1.5 okay and if you are taking table table you know lining should be one inch paper size a4 and the margin is 1.5 on the left hand side and the rest of the size the side i mean to say top bottom and right hand side we should have one inch the project shall be a bounded one in a black format, a black copy, everybody knows about it. And the project uh, should be between 80 to 100 pages. But you know, uh, if you are making internship for that, we have a different, uh, you know, uh, page number. This is the first page of your project. And the same project will also, the same page will also be there inside your book second page will be the same huh? first page which is there on the top and the second page which is inside the book should be the same then we have an index but before index we have to uh, i think uh, certificates are not given certificates should be given let me check the certificate ah, yes so after second page, my third page should be a certificate. Okay. So this is the format of the certificate. You don't have to change anything. University has prescribed everything very clearly. Only thing is that we have to only put our title and the guide name. The rest of the thing will remain same. And this is the declaration by the student. Okay. So here also all the format is same only you have to write down your name, title of the project, name of the candidate. Of the thing, wording will be the same. And after this two certificate, you have to put a index. So this is how you have to put index chapter one, two, three, four, five. <coughs> this is the you know of model structure they have provided. Introduction two should be your methodology, three should be a review of literature. But remember one thing I said chapter number two should be review, third should be research methodology. Isko aap review ko second hi hai. Don't make it third. Theke? Then chapter number four will be data analysis, five will be conclusion suggestions. Five chapter you can finish your project. Now coming to this acknowledgement is a page which if you want to put you can put before index. Now guideline for internship. Now let's see in internship definitely in internship the rest of the thing will be the same. Your uh, first page will be the same. Your you know uh, second page will be the same. Declaration certificate will be the same. Acknowledgement will be the same. Only the index content will be changed. Let's see. Here they have written minimum 20 days or minimum 100 hours internship should be there with any of the organization, NGO or any of the private firm. Okay. The theme of the internship should be based on any study area of the elective courses. Okay. Project report should be minimum 50 pages. Kitte page ka na 50 page ka. Wo kitte page ka bataya tha aapko research project ka. There you have to be between 80 to 100 because there you have to write down a chapter related to review of literature but here such formalities are not there experience certificate is mandatory on internship project so let's see what are the content in the book which are expected from the student executive summary should be there introduction on the company statement and the objectives, your role in the organization during the internship, 
what are the challenges which you confronted okay conclusion you have to give a very brief overview about your experience <coughs> your suggestion to you know full or or bridge the gap between the theory and the practical what you have learned in theory and what you was doing in the practical so that you know the gist you have to write down and the rest of the same same will be i mean to say the reporting the writing the academic writing should be in new times roman font font size will be 12 and 14 line space will be 1.5 so all other thing will remain same only the changes is what their content there the chapters are divided into five parts but here they have divided into six part let's see executive summary introduction on the company statement statement and objectives vision mission of the organization okay you are role in the organization what challenges you face and conclusion so here writing a internship project is completely different that research methodology project and research methodology project is more technical compared to internship related projects <coughs> this is the evaluation pattern of your book prescribed by university of mumbai if you are still from hngc uh, board university they i think they also following the same norms because they have not yet uh, you know uh, came out with their particular guideline for writing a project so your project will be evaluation on the basis of two criteria number one is hard book and viva voce okay hard book will be having 60 marks viva voce will be have a 40 marks so total there is a 100 marks project you have just a moment let go to the slide what you can see yes bachelor's degree pg degree yes pg degree yes so let's see here i have bifurcated your hard bound book 60 marks marks into two category internal external and viva was a 40 marks into two category as a internal and external examiner okay so ultimately your external examiner which will be having a 60 marks in their hand they will give 34 marks for hard copy and 24 marks for viva voce similarly your internal examiner which have 40 marks in their hand they give 24 marks for hard copy and 16 marks for viva voce so both hard copy and viva voce are important you cannot say i have submitted a hard copy so out of 60 i can able to get 50 marks and i can clear my examination no each exam is important and you have to equally qualify in both your examination i mean to say internal external as well as hard bound and viva voce any question you can ask Uh, i think uh, now we can have questions from the student jiva if you can moderate the session please uh, sir i think kushi has a question she has a hand raised so we will just ask her to unmute kushi uh, please kushi hello sir good evening am i audible Yes. 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 So, as you mentioned that uh, the margin size and the line spacing should be one point five one. So, all of those should be in inches or in centimeters. Inches. 
okay sir and one more thing i would like to ask about hypothesis like as you have mentioned ideally we need to choose four objectives so how about the hypothesis like how many hypotheses can we make depending upon our objectives remember one thing khushi uh, you know when you set for example i have set a four objectives now i have to decide all my four objectives should be justified with the help of hypothesis or mm -hmm. any two objectives should be justified okay so on the basis of that you have to set a hypothesis if you have maximum four objective your hypothesis cannot be more than four okay sir and remember the khushi there is one more question you are asking about inches okay uh some you know laptop they show margin in centimeters so at that time if you are uh, if you want to set in a centimeter 1.5 inches means 3.80 cm and 1 inches means 1.54 cm okay sir thank you sir Uh, so Thelma has the next question. So I'll ask you, Thelma. Yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to ask: Can we conduct the review of only we need to stick to research journals? The newspaper article is also uh, you can refer. Okay, uh, review of literature you know covers uh, newspaper article also, magazine articles also. You are, you know, uh, what I say, you know, some some of the internet court also newspaper. So, the media, the online news, that na, that also will be covered. Only thing is that you have to cite it properly. Okay, sir. So, and so, you know, question, you know, how many questions should we include? You only depending on uh, what what is the size of your uh, topic and what objective you have taken. For example, I have set up four objectives, so my questionnaire should cover all the data for four objectives. Okay, but ideal ideal questionnaire says ideal questionnaire says it should not be more than two pages. Okay, why I am saying not more than two pages? Because you can able to print in a single page, front and back. okay and when you give it to respondent respondent will not have any problem in responding of questions where you have a close ended questions and which is also very limited but if you give a entire book for an example 8 9 pages at that time first of all respondent will refuse to respond because this is are baap re itna headache karega kaun so it is always advisable that questioner should not be more than two pages but again depending on your study if your study is small i think if you keep your questionnaire of one page concise your question such a way that it can be accommodated in one page itself okay sir so because you are doing mcom because you are doing mcom research so i think your objective also 3 4 not more much objective you need okay sir so thank you so much there are some questions on the chat box uh, hello sir could you please repeat the author for book on econometry the name of the book is damodar gujarati aditya i am not getting what you are what you are asking to me i think we can't see those questions ah uh, it is a direct question direct question uh yes one of the student asking for sir should we uh, check for plagiarism uh <laughs> so i always always advise my student you know at least you should go for plagiarism check you know why because you know uh, copy down some others work and then you are uh, getting a mark on that ethical it is not correct so try to check a plagiarism and you know uh, okay uh, we are not saying that you check uh, 
through Turnitin or Orkun, any you know software which is you know easily available, you can go, but at least check it so that you know you should have some moral ethics in yourself. Uh, I would like to say something. Uh, plagiarism check is not something compulsory that we have made with uh, both the universities, but uh, it will be uh, on the ethical side if students would like to uh, check the plagiarism. And uh, for the HR students, for the project guidelines, I would like to say on the website in the under the courses PG session uh, section, there is a syllabus of uh, postgraduate courses where uh, the guidelines for the project are already uploaded. And we have uh, forwarded the booklet for all the projects that is the internal project SLE guidelines. Along with that, uh, SEM3 students have already got uh, project guidelines for that uh, all the guidelines are there. So far as plagiarism is concerned, it is a good thing if you check, but we have not made it mandatory. Okay. Sir, are there any more questions on your side which have directly come to you? Just a moment, sir. Uh, there's one more question that, uh, sir, is it uh, mandatory to frame a hypothesis? Uh, framing a hypothesis is not mandatory uh, depending on your study. If you are studying exploratory study, there is no need for hypothesis. Uh, so there are there are cases of many studies which without hypothesis. You uh, please consult your guide because, you know, uh, your guide is a proper person to tell you uh, whether hypothesis uh, you require or not in your study. Okay, so you know, setting a hypothesis, it is not a mandatory. It is purely depending on the study. Even even the UGC guideline for PhD also says setting a hypothesis is purely depending on the study. But if you are setting an hypothesis, you have to test it with the proper mm -hmm. method. You have to understand that. Many students, they just frame the hypothesis and leave hypothesis. it. And at the end, yes, they say yes. that, yeah, this is acceptable and all. This is accepted, but how it is accepted? You have to okay. apply a proper statistical tool to test mm -hmm. it and prove it that this is accepted. Otherwise, don't frame the hypothesis. Yes, and I think Sir also made it very clear when he gave his slides that uh, the hypothesis needs to be tested. Yes, exactly. Yes. Any other questions from the students? You all can raise your hands so that we know that there is a question from your side. Okay. Sir, anything from your side? Any other questions? If you have received it. No, sir. Up to now, that much question I have. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes, Jeeva. Over to you. Yeah, I, I think we do not have questions because you explained it so well <laughs> that there's no questions left for the kids. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jeeva Rocky. I am a student representative of the MCOM committee. I would like to thank each and every one of you for attending the session today. I would like to thank the principal Neelam ma'am, Pooja ma'am, our vice principal Jasbir ma'am for being a constant pillar of support. And also a big thank you to Rahul sir, the MCOM committee coordinator of Lala College and Dharti ma'am, the teacher in charge of MCOM at HR College. And the most important of all, the person who has spent two hours on a Sunday evening, Dr. Kuldeep sir, thank you so much for taking out valuable time of yours and spending here with us. We really do appreciate it. And thank you everyone who has been working behind the scenes for making this event a success. Hope you all had an informative sessions. 
we do have a feedback form in the chat box do fill it that's it for the day thank you you guys thank you thank you so much jiva thank and you, thank everyone. you so much kuldeep sir for your valuable time thank you thank and you all of you on the sunday it was wonderful to have you thank you thank you jasbir madam thank you so much thank you sir thank you kuldeep sir well appreciated thank to you, take man. a session on sunday thank you ma'am this is this is a, a daily routine for me so for me sunday monday is nothing <laughs> great great sir <laughs> Great. Can we have a group snap? Can we have a group snap together? If kids are there, if students are there, if you all can share your videos. Oh uh, yes, sir. Does Does we, madam, also? Ah, uh, sir, I am little bit outside, so <laughs> I won't be convenient. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yes. Sir. Thank okay all so this if if there's more students joining in just keep your camera on for a span of 20 seconds i'll click the picture ashok ashok sir good evening yes we have ashok sir and i think we have yes. rasul sir also there with us so uh, ashok sir was uh, listening quietly <laughs> yes ashok sir was there chetan maru sir was there from lala lajpatra and we have principal of kb pendarkar college our dear dr lashune sir was also joining the meeting sir kunam sir tumhi aat ka lashune sir samala disat nahi sir tumhi sir was also there welcome, i can see welcome welcome all welcome all the principals and the professors from the the college it is great to have you all on sunday evening with us in on this session thank you so much thank you so much sir so it seems that uh, they, this is program is well organized you know and well informed and thank that you. is why all the people are you know joining even on the sundays <laughs> yeah i think we are good thank you, thank so you much, everybody Jeeva. thank you and thanks thank to you. jiva thank you ishmi thank you janvi thank you abhay and all my dear student volunteers who have been here with me thank you so much thank you thank you sir thank you i think all can fill thank the you. feedback thank form and uh, then you all can exit the meeting room i request everybody to fill the feedback form thank you sir